Good morning, friends. Glad to see you in the church on this course a Sunday morning. People who worship at home through Facebook, uh, glad to know that you are there and welcome to worship with us this morning. This is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And we are worshiping God who will make us passionate. So the word of God comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus talking about where our treasure is, there is our heart going to be. So let's listen to the word of God this morning from the Old and from the New Testament. Glad to have you here. We have a couple of announcements after our opening prayer, so let's pay attention on those brief announcements that we are going to make. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, in Christ's name we have come together on this court this Sunday morning as we worship together, as we worship from heart, as we bring your Son, Jesus Christ, right in the middle of this gathering, as we adore the name of Christ, and as we pray and bless everyone in the sanctuary, everyone at home, everybody who will be part of this service through any means, through Facebook or YouTube, maybe somebody in the parish hall, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us this morning. Help us to hear your word and help us to fall in love with you. It is in his name we pray. Amen. First short announcement. September 13, our Wednesday night program will start. So there will be study. It runs till Feb uh, November 15. So the study itself is eight week long. But then we have four uh, fellowship lunches. We call them potluck lunches. Every first Wednesday of the month will be fellowship luncheon or dinner, however you call it. So um, the whole fall program will last till November 15, which is one week before Thanksgiving. So sign-ups for the study are here. There is a book that we need to order. Uh, the price for the book is about $12, I think. It's a great study. We've been working hard to find something that is responding to, to your needs and, and requests that we are hearing from you. The name of the study is Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Okay? And more information about the content of the study coming, but I will pass this out so that you can sign up so we know how many books we order. About 30 to 40 people normally sign up, and about 25 to 30 of them will attend. So uh, I hope we can get good, good feel about how many people will be attending, available to attend this study. Okay, uh, John uh, Housen has a announcement somewhere. Where is John? John is right here, okay. Well, hello, uh, good morning. For those of you who don't know me, which will probably be not very many, uh, I'm John Allison of the evangelism team. Stephanie's out of town this weekend. So next Sunday is August 27th. Uh, it's something we've waited for for a long time. And don't forget, there's a third part of this coming up in November. So, you know, we'll just make it last a year. Um, and if you look in your bulletin, you'll find this little card in there. Now, in this little card, what are you supposed to do with it? Well, you're supposed to hand it to a family or a friend. And, and, and uh, invite them next Sunday. Now this is our worship outside the walls, the wow service, where we're outside anyway. And so the service starts at 11 o'clock, and after the service, don't forget, we'll have food, and then we have, um, we're gonna have little booths inside that will be uh, talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And so we got a lot of fruity people ready to do this, and there's gonna be a few games, there's a little card and things, and there are prizes. I don't get to win, but still. Uh, You'll have, you'll have a wonderful time. And as I said, uh, if you need any extra of these cards, in case you have somebody back there where Sue is standing, there's a stack of these somewhere. Yeah. So if you need to invite more than one person, please take these and invite people. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Linda Williams. 
and I am the youth director, and I love that job. Um, just want to let you know that next Saturday from 11 to 4, out here behind the Wesley House, the youth are going to have a, a fundraiser of a car wash. So bring your dirty vehicles and pass the word to your neighbors. We will use all of the funds from that to fund our ministries. None of this will be stuff that we actually use for ourselves. So we, we do have a, a food agape ministry that we um, send take, prepare, and take meals to our shut-ins to let them know that we love them and other wonderful people in this congregation that we, we love and just want you to know that we do care about. It. But the youth are doing a lot of things behind the scenes, but that's what that's doing. Bring your dirty vehicles and pass the word. 11 to 4 next Saturday. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's stand and sing our first hymn together leaning on the everlasting arms. Before being seated, please share the peace of Christ with your neighbor.
Let's welcome our children by singing, Jesus Loves Me. today? Good, good, good. Did you have a good week? Yeah, did school start for you guys yet? Yes, how's that going? Good, good. You guys doing okay? Yeah, okay. yeah it's hard to judge after just three days. Don't worry, it'll get better. Six days. Oh, never mind. Six to, three to six days. Um, we'll get there. Right, right. We have multiple school systems here. And I forgot that. Um, well, today we are going to talk a little bit about calling. Uh, what does it mean to get a call? Oh, hey, hang on a second. Uh -huh. Hang on just a second. Um, yeah? Okay, yeah? All right. It's, um, I'll be back there in just a little bit, okay? All right. Oh, all these calls. Um, so I just got a call. Um, so what does it mean to get a call? Yeah? <laughs> right when my phone rings. Oh, I could call for help. Right, right, or somebody could call me for help. Sure. Do you, what, what about if it's not a phone? Can you call somebody without a phone? No. <laughs> I could just yell really loud. I could. I mean, sure. What are some reasons that people call? Yeah. Okay. Maybe you don't live in the same neighborhood. Say it again, Canaan. I could melt. Oh, a male. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not milk. That's silly. Um, I could mail. That's true. Um, so when people call me, what are some reasons they could call? Oh, I've got one. Yeah? <laughs> that's right, to talk to me about updating my car's extended warranty. Um, that's very true. They could. Um, a lot of people want to talk to me about that. Um, Sometimes when a friend calls you, what does a friend want to do when they call you? They could talk to you. Um, they want to invite you somewhere. That's always nice when somebody calls me to, to go someplace with them. What about if, if dinner is ready? Could your mom call your mom or dad call you when dinner's ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, right. Just yell up the stairs or out into the yard. Dinner's ready. Um, so sure, people call us to them all the time. Um, and so today, uh, the grown-ups are talking about calling. Um, and so we, I wanted to try to talk to you guys just a little bit about ways that God could call us. How could God call us? What do you think? Sure, we can call God. How can we call God? We can yell. We could yell, that's true. Um, that happens, it really does. Sometimes in my car. Um, yes, we could pray, sure, yeah. We could call him inside our head, sure. Um, we could talk to him in our head, we could talk to him out loud, we could, we could scream. Um, uh, we could yell, that's very true. All of those things happen. Um, but God, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is, that, is that the, the communication goes both ways. Not only can we call out to God, but God can call out to us. The Bible talks about God talking to us, sometimes in a voice, sometimes in a feeling, sometimes in nature. Sometimes he talks to us through other people. 
Um, sometimes he talks to us uh, through the Bible, and he wants us, you, sometimes you just you get, a, you get a, a feeling to, that you need to read a certain passage because God specifically wants to say something to you. God calls out to us too. And when he calls us, what do you think he calls us to, what do you think, why do you think he calls us? Definitely. He want, it's the same reason that, that we call other people, that other people call us. He wants to be close to us. He wants us to, he wants to, us, to invite us places. He wants us to invite us to be closer to him. Yes? I don't think he wants to sell us anything, but he definitely sometimes wants to tell us good advice. Um, sure. Hang on, hang on. He has, that's very true. Um, and so God is constantly calling to us and asking us to talk to him and to listen to him too. So um, as you guys are going through your week and going through your lives, remember that God is always wanting you to be closer to him, calling you to be closer to him, okay? Let's call out to God. Let's pray real quick, okay? And we'll listen a little too. Father God, thank you so much for wanting to be with us. Thank you so much for um, calling us to you, calling us into a relationship with you, and speaking to us, um, speaking to us through your word, speaking to us in the quiet moments, helping us to um, direct our lives and to point us in the directions that you would have us go. Lord, speak to us today, speak to us this week, um, call us to you and help us to, um, to be your word and your calling in this world to other people. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're having a, just a tiny programming change. So all of the children can stay where you're at, just turn around because we're going to listen to the big kids sing you a song. Sister, your light shines from the heavens, giving glory, all the glory to the maker. Gentle wind, welcome.
join in the song. There is work to be done for the glory, all the glory to the Lord. Good morning again. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Join me in the first reading of our scripture found on page 714 in your pew Bible, and is Psalm 67. Lord, grant us grace and bless us. Let God make his face shine on us, so that your way becomes known on earth so that your salvation becomes known among the nations. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. Let the people celebrate and shout with joy, because you judge the nations fairly and guide all nations on the earth. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. The second reading will be from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, found in the Pew Bible on page 15. After these events, the Lord's word came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I will be your I am your protector. Your reward will be great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you possibly give me since I still have no children? The head of my household is Eleazar, a man from Damascus. He continued, since you haven't given me any children, the head of my household will be my heir. The Lord's word came immediately to him. This man will not be your heir. Your heir will definitely be from your own your own, your very own biological child. Then he brought Abram outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you think you can count them. He continued, this is how many children you will have. Abraham, Abraham trusted the Lord and the Lord recognized Abram's high moral character. The third reading will be from Romans 11 Verses 29 to 32, found in the Pew Bible on page 1381. God's gifts are call and calling can't be taken back. Once you, have, once you were disobedient to God, but now you have mercy because they were disobedient, the Israelites. In the same way, they have also been disobedient because of the mercy that you received. So now they can receive mercy too. God has locked up all people in disobedience in order to have mercy on all of them. Now please stand for the reading of the gospel from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, found in the Pew Bible on page 1176.
Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them, and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat at, eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning to everybody. Glad to see you in the church this morning. If you are visiting, please come back. Love to have you. As John Mundine mentioned, uh, made announcement, we will have big Sunday next Sunday. Well, I think this is big Sunday too, but we have one service at 11 a.m. We've been building up these uh, friendship Sundays quite some time, and seems like there is a um, good place for this kind of service. So we are looking forward to have lots of people here on our church campus again next Sunday. What is your passion? What is your passion? That's a big question. I don't think even I try to preach my heart out from this, about this, I don't think we can get through with it all what passion is in the biblical context. But I believe that um, <clears throat> if you are trying to ask what is Jesus' game plan for you or vision for you, where is it you get your passion? I think this gospel reading answers pretty well to us all. Let's listen to it one more time. I know you have heard it, Many times, and this may be one of you all's favorite scripture reading in the Bible, in the entire Bible. Here is what our Savior says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither mud nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then the culmination of this paragraph is the chapter, verse 21, as Jesus completes this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Would it be, would it be right to say considering about the word passion, that for where your treasure is, there your passion will be also. So what is most important thing for you and me, that is what brings passion to you. Now, please hear it right. Jesus did not say, don't worry about this life at all. Don't build your career. Don't, don't work. Do nothing. Says pray and sing. Now, this is not what he says. But Jesus, by saying this, he's emphasizing that you get your prior, priorities right. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Now remember, treasure is something where your heart is. It's very important to work, be, be, be hard worker, to build your career, to be, um, be um, committed, that's all good. But Jesus is saying that in all, uh, as you do all that, make sure you get your priorities right. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There your passion is. My question this morning to us as we listen to these words of gospel, and I have a few other references here from the Bible, do we have passion for Jesus? Do we have passion for God? Berea Church, do we have passion for Jesus? Some of you say, Timo, I used to. 
I used to have, or you should have known me 20 years ago, five years ago, 50 years ago, a year ago. I had passion. I don't know about today, but I used to have. Or what is your passion? What is your passion? Let's think about it. Let's pray about this and think about this. I believe one of the what's words should I say in today's church is vision. A vision. Because pastors preach about it, like your, your pastor. Sometimes um, we talk about it in our board meetings. We've been through a vision envisioning process here at Berea UMC, and it was very useful. I think it was, and we don't see the end of it yet. We write about it. There are seminars about the vision and teaching sessions and training and so forth, conferences focus on it. So vision is important. So putting it short, these days a person cannot hang around pastors or church leaders very long time without talking about vision. So what is vision? I wrote it down and I have probably told my vision team a couple of times what I believe vision is as we are trying to tackle to it. One explanation could be this. This is from my heart, putting it shortly. Vision is seeing what is not yet here. Visualizing something before it is. It goes along what the Bible says in the, in the letter to Hebrews in the, uh, chapter 11, what faith is, you remember? So vision is something that you see it and visualizing something before it is. Okay? I happened to read a book a little while ago, some time ago. It is from George Barna. You know this name. He has written lots of books about this very matter. You can call him Christian researcher. researcher. Here's what he says. Listen to this. A vision for ministry is a clear mental image of a preferable future imparted by God to his chosen servants, and is based upon an accurate understanding of God, self, and circumstances. Now, he goes a little bit wider and deeper what my brief explanation was. So, vision is an accurate understanding of God, understanding of God and yourself, and then circumstances. You can get that all through vision. Here's what I have found. I find it sometimes often uh, a little bit odd that when people describe their dreams and their vision for the future, and yet the picture they paint has nothing to do with their passion. Listen to this. Nothing to do with their passion or giftedness or life preparation or experiences. And I don't think vision would contradict any of these direction shapers, you might call them. I think vision wouldn't do that. But passion is so important. Let us put it this way. If our vision comes, if our vision comes, I think it's something already up there, if our vision comes from God, we will also have a passion for it. If you are to share your vision and you don't have no passion for it, somebody may have write to us, what kind of vision is that? Is it just a statement about something, common good? Friends, vision that comes from God goes deeper. It shakes you up. In fact, passion fuels vision. Passion fuels vision. Passion brings energy. 
to your vision, to your dreaming. If we don't have the emotional fire and heartfelt enthusiasm known as passion, we won't have true vision. I don't think so. One time, not too long time ago, I was listening to one church pastor. I, 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 I'm reading my notes about what he said. He was a, I think his last name was uh, Pastor Ford. Anyway, he's pastoring at the big church, McLean Bible Church, just outside of Washington, D.C. Some of you may be familiar about this ministry. I think it's a pretty, pretty large ministry there. Well, there's lots of people out there for sure. So, as a matter of fact, he was one of the speakers in the Church Growth Seminar at East Stanley Jones uh, World Mission and Evangelism Center at Asbury Seminary. It was one of the best, best uh, seminars I've been attending in my whole life, really. But here's what he says. I wrote it down. He says, their church grew from 250 to 7,000 members in 10 years. Can you think about that? From 250 to 7,000 in, in, in 10 years. I have seen some church growth myself, but never seen anything like this. And here's what he says. This is a uh, pastor from McLean Bible Church. I think his last name was Ford. There are so many speakers, but I have written down something in my notes. I remember him saying, and I wrote it down, I didn't really have a vision, but I had a passion. I had a passion. I had a passion for reaching secular people because I was a secular person one time. And I kept on asking, how can this church reach me? How can this church reach me? Friends, passion, Christ-given passion fuels our vision, our dreams, our actions for Christ's church. Vision is just not the dry statement, the paper corn of the paper. It comes out from your heart. It directs, it guides, it, you, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. I don't know how it was with you when you were brought to Christ. You have your story and some of the stories I have heard. You sharing your testimony. And they're all different. They're all important. Nobody has story like your story is. But I can tell, and I have shared this a few times, I can tell something about how I was brought into in, in into faith and to Jesus. Being raised in religious home, I have been baptized, I have been confirmed and vaccinated orderly, but I didn't know Jesus. I did not know Jesus. I was running from him, actually. My life wasn't bad. It was everything seems to be ordered, but it was the inward emptiness that was yelling out Emptiness, emptiness, emptiness. But then I met these young people. They were passionate. Now, they were not pushy. It won't work for me. But they were just passionate. There was something about them that was wooing me to Christ, wooing to experience something what they had. And they literally brought me in to church and into a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Because they were passionate. They were just ordinary young people, just, just funny, nice people, but they were passionate. They were passionate about Jesus. They were clear pictures about Christ. And Christ was right in the center. They had different plans for their studies, and they were working, and they had their career, but yes, but Christ was right in the center of it, and that was so loud sermon to me. I know about him, but how in the world they are so much deeper in their faith? Seem like they have put everything else aside, and there's just Christ 
everywhere when, they, when you listen to that talk. The question I would like to ask, we should be asking today, how to cultivate, refuel, and increase passion. Berea UMC, this is the most important question for us to ask. And friends who are worshiping at home, how to cultivate, how to refuel the passion we ought to have. Would you like to cultivate a greater spiritual passion? Some of you say, yes, I would love to. If you or I want, or we want long-term stay in power in ministry, so that the ministry is really building up and it's powerful and it's, it's, it's bringing people in, we need to identify ways to refuel and increase our passion by the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it for you. And you can't do it for me. It has to come outside. And the Holy Spirit is there for the church to refuel our passion for Jesus, our Savior. We have different passions in the church. When you listen to your friend and, and they have different ideas about passion, I feel that if I want to refuel and I have reason Sometimes I don't see it that I have need for that. But sometimes it is, it is pain in my heart that I need to refuel my passion for Christ. And then I start thinking about where was I touched by God last time? What happened? What were the circumstances when I felt that Christ refueled his passion right into my heart? And I'm like a little baby. I try to remember who gave me candy last time. I go and talk to him again. I go after God. Where was it? Where was it, God, you touched my heart? I try to go to the same place where I felt the Holy Spirit touch my heart. I try to go to the same place, try to find the same circumstances. Maybe I'm reading the same book. There are some books I'm reading again and again and again. Some of you, how about you? Where you want the Holy Spirit to refuel your passion? Some of you came to the Lord through small groups. And you say, Pastor, that's my heart. That's my pastor. That's my passion. I would be happy to find that small group <clears throat> where really I found Christ and passion for him. So you have passion for small groups. Now, don't quit before you find your small group or start leading a small group. If you have faith in the small group, please don't quit <clears throat> before you are leading or participating in one or Sunday school class. Some of you say, well, <coughs> Timo, I'm old fashioned. I was, I was brought to Christ in the revival service. It was old-fashioned revival service <coughs> where I found Jesus. And every time when you hear revival service, you see, this is where I belong. This is where I can rekindle my heart, recommit my heart. This is where the Holy Spirit speak to me, and that's what I want. I wish our churches had revival services more. And that's a good question we should. I believe every Sunday morning needs to be a revival service. Am I right? We are passionate about different ways, or we used to be passionate about different uh, ways. The more times of oneness we find with God, the greater passion there will be in your heart. Wherever you go to find Jesus, he will never disappoint you. You will walk out by being passionate and refueled and rededicated to him and to his service. I hope it happened to you this morning. I truly do. Another way that I have learned is to take time for myself. 
I am not the best teacher to you about this because I haven't done it very well with myself, but this past summer I did, and it was every minute, every day was very needed for myself. I was able to visit my family after several years of not seeing them, and I feel that I should have met a few of them earlier. I really feel that way. But I also feel that the, uh, sometimes I just realize this is so good for my own soul. Just to walk around and take time for myself. It didn't mean that I hold Bible all the time and say a prayer and preach to myself because I didn't have church to preach to. No, but I was, I was with the Lord and I feel that he refueled my passion for it. Attending conferences or listening to somebody who is passionate may be inspirational for you to rekindle and refuel your passion. Whatever that place is where you've been brought in, where Holy Spirit touched your heart, that is where you get your passion. Going back to our Old Testament reading on Abraham or Abram at that time, Genesis 15, 5 to 6. Abram needed his passion, the passion to be refueled. He didn't see much at that point. He didn't see much future for himself, for his family. He didn't have children. He didn't have offspring to continue his, whatever he was doing. And he didn't see much at that time. How many times you have been in the situation that you don't see much? Your life is pretty narrow and narrow-minded, and you don't see much God's possibilities and opportunities. And when you get to that point, that's how you see everything around you. You come to church, this is how you see your church. To be discouraged, I have always said this, to be discouraged by your circumstances or by every reason, that is the most dangerous thing to be, place to be. That's, that's killer. If you realize you've been discouraged, you have lost out of fuel to rekindle your passion, you better start looking, God, for help, because that is not the place you want to be. Because you are going to influence everybody by your discouragement. You come to your team meeting, you come to church, you attend, you go home and you see your family and friends. It is discouragement what you preach because your life has gotten so small and narrow-minded. And God is 100 miles out of your life. And Ephraim was in that situation. What God told him, God took him outside God pulled him out from his life context. And God says, listen to this, look up at the heavens and count the stars. <laughs> That's our assignment. Have you been trying to do that? Okay, God, I'm going to do it for you. This section here, wait a minute, 78,500 so forth stars. And then right next to it, the little square there, then you realize, I, I can't do it. And God said, if indeed you can count them, the answer was clear, no, he couldn't. So this is what God says when you have met him and he has refueled your passion. God says, you didn't see more than this little thing and you got yourself in so very discouraging spot. Let me open it up a little bit for you. Count all these blessings and opportunities I place before you. Start counting. How many you see? I bet you can't do it. And he keep on adding on. Here is one more. Here is 1,000 more. Here is 500 more for you. And then the answer to Abraham was that so shall your offerings be. So if you believe this, if you take this, what I'm giving to you, 
This is how much your life will be multiplying for blessings. And this is what passion does. It will multiply your blessings. It will make your life different. So, are we looking for a passion? What is your passion this morning? I've been one time, I have told you, at Sinai Desert. That's the place to be. If you want to feel loneliness, that's the place to go. But I'm telling you, there is, there is something you've got to see. Now, the darkness, when it comes to desert, it is so deep that you, I have told you, you kind of disappeared into it. You, it's a weird question. You wonder, did I get lost in here? Because you don't, have no, you don't have no focus where to look. It's so dark. You, you, don't, you don't know. You don't want to go too far from the, any sign uh, or lights or anything because you really get lost. You, there's not, you can't see nothing. It's so deep, the darkness. But then all of a sudden when the star, you see the stars. You see all those millions of stars. And there's something that happened right away in your heart. This marvelous dream and experience under the touching scene of God's sky makes you wonder how great the Lord is. And that's the moment that he refuel your passion and trust in him and you start seeing things from different perspectives. Friends, we have to cultivate and review and increase our passion to Jesus Christ. If we talk about vision or building or not building or whatever we are talking about related to ministry or you in your family context, without passion, that's waste of time. It's not going to happen. You need to let the Lord refuel your passion, increase your passion and you start seeing things from his perspective. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If the ushers come forward, we, uh, we, we move into a ministry of giving time. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that you can and you want refuel, cultivate our passion for you. My passion with you and our passion with you. So that we can see the stars, not just the one little star twinkling but we can see the whole sky full of stars reminding about your greatness and blessing and passion and plan for us. Help us to see this as we continue our ministry of Kevin. In Christ's name, amen. Please stand if you can.
be seated. Thank you. We pray for one another and we bless one another before we go back to our mission field this morning. How many of you came to church with a prayer request this morning? Let me see your hand. Many of us, just about everyone almost. You are right time, right place. God, hear your prayers and he answered your prayers. He will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. We also want to continue praying for our um, friends and church family members on our prayer chain list in the back of your bulletin. Please turn if you don't mind, please. We want to continue praying for Preston and Scott and Gerald and Mike. We pray for Ian, nephew to Chris, and mine, mother of Marvin, Susan, daughter of Jackie, and other Susan, and Donald, friend of Keith. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus. As we pour out your heart, our heart to you, for the sake of our friends, our church family members, Lord, these friends who are looking and seeking for your help, some of them are so ill, please place your healing hand upon them. Some of them recovering and gaining their strength, Lord, continue your work with them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayers and listening to our hearts. As we continue praying for Margaret, Shari and Dave and Edna, Chuck and Becky, Don and Jackie, Wes and Evelyn and Betty, and we continue praying for this war in Ukraine. Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, you are our refuge. You are our powerhouse. Rescuer, and you are everything, Lord, to us. Hear our prayers for one another this morning in the sanctuary. Also, we pray for the unspoken matters, concern that we can't share with anybody. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing us this morning. We beseech you, Lord, dear Jesus Christ. We ask, grant your passion And help us, help it to be our power and vision by which we may be strengthened, protected, and defended and guided. May your holy word to be our powerful food and drink by which we may be nourished and inappreciated and overjoyed. This is what we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, I just have a praise to share with you all. And uh, maybe you can also help us celebrate Richard Hatch's turning 75 today. Happy birthday.
It's a blessing to have you back with us. Happy birthday. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, sent forth by God's blessing. As we leave this place of worship and we go back to our mission field, we want to be passionate, am I right? By the way, what do you do this afternoon between 3 and 4.30? Do you have a plan? I know some of you are worried what's going on. <laughs> now, there are some of us going to Berea College campus. There is a uh, annual event for young students called God on the quad. It is welcoming these new students and greeting and maybe connecting them. So if you don't have anything to do, see us 2.30 in front of the parish house. We just inspirationally created a team going there. We don't want to miss this opportunity. So join with us, okay? Be here at 2.30 and we go there and we have some material to pass out and and welcome cards and stuff like that. So uh, join with us, it's going to be good. Open our hearts for the blessing and benediction. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.